Thank you for coming today. Uh, today we will be discussing Lesson 7 as well as Lesson 8. We will be learning uh, Introduction to Vowels, specifically the 8th type of vowel. As you can see on the board, we have the first three 8th type vowels, which is the Kamat, the Patak, and the Katak, Patak. Um, as we begin, let's all turn to page 109 of your textbooks. Introduction to Vowels. As previously stated, vowels in Hebrew do not appear as letters in the text, except with the vowel letter Yod and Vav. Vowels are indicated in Hebrew using dashes and dots below, to the side or above the letter, as well as below. These markings are not usually needed for fluent readers. Therefore, most books and newspapers printed in Israel do not include vowel points. The name for the vowel sign in the Hebrew is nikud, which means pointing, or nikudot, which means points. When the Nakud is printed in a text, it is possible to know exactly how the text should be vocalized or pronounced. Even if the reader is unfamiliar with Hebrew word patterns and vocabulary, most Hebrew vowels are printed below the letters. When this occurs, the letter above is read first, then the sound of the vowel below. For example, the Patak vowel appears as a short horizontal line and makes the A uh sound. For instance, you have a Tav, so it's a Ta sound. When placed beneath the letter Tav, the resulting syllable is pronounced Ta. In Hebrew, there are two kinds of syllables, open and closed syllables. An open syllable is one that ends with a vowel sound, such as the example above with the letter Tav and the Patak. A closed syllable ends with another consonant sound. Here is an example. So you have the Tav, the Patak, and you have, oh my bad, you got the Chet, the Tav, and the, of course, the Patak. So it's pronounced the first is the chet, is pronounced, followed by the a ah sound of the patah vowel, and then the syllable concludes with the tav. The resulting sound is chat. The syllables can combine to form a word like this, okay? Now this is tchat. The word is pronounced tchat. Vowel types, like many languages, Hebrew vowels are classified based on their sound. We refer to these types as A, E, I, O, and U vowels. Hebrew vowels are more similar to vowels of Latin-based languages, such as Spanish and Italiano or Italian than they are to English. Vowels in, the, in these languages, such as A, E, I, O, and U, sound like A, E, E, O, U. Respectfully, or respectively, it works best to transliterate Hebrew vowels in this way as well. Remember to read vowels in transliterated Hebrew text this way. For example, the syllables chet, with the English word hot 
knots, and hands. Vowel length. Within each vowel type, there are several individual vowels. Each of these vowels is characterized by a length. They may be considered reduced, short, or long, or they can be unchangeable long. So when a vowel sound, for instance, is unchangeably long, for simplicity, we will not distinguish between the long and unchangeable long. So they're roughly similar, so we're not going to make a distinction. In English, the short and long vowel sounds are significantly different. For example, the short A produces a vowel as in the word fat, so it's A. Ah. Whereas the long A produces the sound A, like it faints. In Hebrew, there are some slight differences, but general, generally, vowels of different lengths <coughs> produce nearly the same sound. The difference is more often the actual length of the sound or the <coughs> syllables stressed in the word. Each length or the length of the vowel may affect how the word is divided into syllables. Simple and full vowels. Vowels can also be classified as simple or full. Most vowels are simple, meaning that they consist of only a single vowel mark placed with a regular consonant, uh, consonantal vowel or letter. Uh, full vowels are those that are combined with a vowel letter such as Vav or Yod. So for instance, like a Vav or a Yod, sort of going to write in the center of this. So you'll see, like for instance, Av. Now why did I use this as an example? Well, Av is the name of Father in Hebrew. So for instance, the vowel points at the bottom, of course, as well as the vowel sound, also makes the Vav sound. But, if you also do a transliteration of this, which will be pretty interesting, if you add one more letter, such as ot, you'll find that it makes a long or a lengthy ah sound. So this is ot in Hebrew, which means donkey. It can also mean another thing, but I do not want to say it. <laughs> so, now that is the ancient way of saying or spelling the word donkey. So today we will learn, of course, the vowel sounds. Of course, before we begin, I want to uh, introduce the method of transliteration. To transliterate a word, just record the transliteration value of each letter and vowel sound in the order that they are spoken. For instance, you have the vowel sound tekhat, okay, and the word tekhat. So you'll see that the two vowel sounds specifically you have the tav, the patah, the chet, the patah, and in this example, first write the letter T of the first Tav, then write an A to represent the Patak vowel below the Tav. Next, write the CH for the Chet, the A for the Patak beneath the Chet, and finally the letter T for the letter Tav at the end. The resulting transliteration is Tehat. So, A-type vowels. Okay, so I'm going to give you a basic table, okay, of the A-type vowels. There are three A-type vowels in the Hebrew language. The first one is the Hamat. As you notice, it's right here. That is the Hamat. So I'm going to circle the Hamat. The next letter, of course, in the Hebrew is the patah, which is
which is right here. Okay, and then of course, finally, you have the chetet, chetak, which is this vowel sound right here. So you notice that I put the letter in red, but I put the vowel sound in blue as we begin. We're going to learn more about these as we continue. The chamats is sometimes called the chametz. Its pronunciation varies depending on the accent. For instance, if you have a Ashkenazi dialect, it would be chametz. Um, however, you know, you have the Sephardi or Sephardic pronunciation, which is called chametz. It is sufficient to pronounce chametz as a A sound, like the A in aqua. However, it is technically more accurate to pronounce it closer to the word ah, with more of a rounded mouth. However, in Israel, not all speakers are so precise, so it is definitely okay simply to pronounce the vowel as ah. With an Eastern European Ashkenazi dialect or accent, this vowel is different, very different, so much so, each community pronounces it differently, but generally it is pronounced with, let's say, uh, somewhere between a U, as in the word book, and the O sound in open. This is why certain words are transliterated differently, such as Israel and Israel. So, for instance, you'll see also, for instance, in the word Adonai, in Ashkenazi you'll see Adonai versus Adonai. Alright, the next that we're going to cover is the Patak. The Patak simply means open, to be open. The sound of this vowel is a plain open A ah sound. It is similar to the sound of the short O in American English. So the batak sounds like O or A, ah, for instance, in the word hot. So A ah sound. Remember, it's A, ah, not necessarily a O like the textbook says. Kata patak, <coughs> which is the next vowel, is kata patak is re a reduced vowel. Reduced vowels are also sometimes called semi vowels or half vowels or compound vowel. The katef means hurry. So for instance, we'll say hurry katak. So these vowels are very short. A katak is also sometimes pronounced as katak. Reduced vowels usually only appear under guttural letters such as aleph, he, ket, and ayin. The stress syllable of a word will never be one with a reduced vowel, such as a katak betuk. Katak betuk is pronounced the same way as patak, but for a shorter amount of time. So for instance, we're also going to learn today a full type vowel, for instance a full A vowel, we are going to learn. Among A type vowels, one is in one case is considered a full vowel. Remember, a full vowel is a vowel mark combined with a letter to form a vowel sound. So I'm going to give an example of that here. So this, for instance, is the Hamatse which is a full vowel. The he is silent, just as the aleph represents any letter. So, when the chamats occurs before a he at the end of a vowel or at the end of a word, the he is silent, just like the he is silent at the end of a name such as Sarah. The chamats and the he combine together to form the full vowel. It is simply called chamats he. Alright, so we're going to also learn the next full vowel for the chamats. 
and that is going to be, of course, a simple Hamas. Simple Kamax uh, or Kamax simple vowel plus the letter He with a Mapi. The He is pronounced with an audible H sound, so Ka <coughs> sound. So we're gonna we're learning the distinction between these two uh, whole A vowel sounds. Since the letter He in the syllable is A in English words, is also unpronounced. It is natural to leave the H when transliterating. Some words are often transliterated without the H, but we will always leave it on for the sake of consistency. However, if the He contains a dot, then the He is not silent and is not considered a part of the vowel. This dot looks the same as a dagesh, but it is called a mapik. It performs a different function. They are very easy to tell apart. A dagesh never appears in a he, and a mapik can only occur in a he at the end of a word. Underline that. So, for instance, we have the vowel. So, for instance, this is pronounced, so it's ah to actually pronounce the hey. Now, we're going to learn some vocabulary words for lesson seven. The first word is key, which means because, it also means for. Um, you have me, um, actually more uh, correctly pronounced, me which means from, and then you have meod, which is very. So for instance, when I say tov meod, I am saying very good, because the word tov means good, and the word meod means very. The next word we are going to learn is sefer, which means book, or for instance, a scroll. So for instance, you would refer to the Torah scroll as the Sefer Torah. Then you have Ra, which means to see. Like for instance, I see you. Then you have the word Shalom, okay, which means peace. Now the word Shalom comes from the root word Shalem, which is the uh, name of Jerusalem. So, for instance, also you have Yerushalayim, or Yerushalayim in Hebrew. So, for instance, it means that the root word for these, the word Yerushalayim, as well as Shalom, is the word Shalem. Now, final, letter, final word is the word Shem, which means name. So, for instance, when I refer to Hashem, the name of God, I refer to him so I do not violate the mythical commandment to say the name of the Lord your God in vain. In other words, I do not want to say his name loosely before men or before anyone because I do not want to be in violation of saying the name of Hashem my God in vain. So as far as we are continuing, where exercises as well as transliterations and the quiz are to be done at home. Mm -hmm. Let's also move to lesson eight. So we've learned today the A-type vowels. For instance, you have the kamat, you have the patak, and you have the katak patak. So let's move on to our next lesson. So we're going to move on to lesson number eight. Of which we will learn, of course, the Dagash. That right there. And then, of course, we will learn, of course, the Sheva.
And then we are going to go into adjectives, okay? So let's all turn to page 119. By the way, one of my favorite Tefillin uh, Psalms is Tefillin Aleph Aleph, or better yet, 119. All right, so the guest call and the guest Kazakh. Now, for instance, um, at the, when, for instance, we, at the end of each um, book of the Torah, we simply say Chazach, Chazach, Yisech Serach, and which means, um, you know, let us be strengthened and let us be strong. Um, there are two types of Degash, and they look identical. One is called a Degash Kal, which is a which is light and the other is called a dagash chazach which means strong now the word chazach literally means strong the dagash chal only changes the pronunciation of the letter for example from vet to bet a dagash chazach strengthens the sound of the letter causing it to span syllables much like a double letter in English. So for instance, you have the letter OO for an example in the word book. So it strengthens the book sound or the O sound in the word book. It also will change the pronunciation of or on applicable letters. In ancient times, six letters changed their pronunciation when a Degash appeared in them. The six letters that changed were Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Ha, He, and Ta. Today, in modern Hebrew, only Bet, Ha, and Pe change their pronunciations when they contain a Degash. So, modern Degashes, for instance, um, you'll notice that there's a little like little chart on your uh, text. You have modern Degash, and then you have modern with no Degash, and then you have ancient Degash, as well as uh, ancient with no Degash. These are how you would pronounce each letter. Now, the types of the gash that simply hardens the pronunciation is called the gash call. A the gash call can only appear in these six letters. It is good to remember them. So we're going to take a note. When you go home tonight, you are going to write these letters down with the gash as your practice letters to write. So you have the bet, the gamo, the dalit, the ka the pay and the top. Now, the tradition um, mnemonic device is the phrase baguette kafet, which means something to the effect of a knotted garment. Function of the gash kazakh, the gash kazakh strengthens the sound of a letter. As a result, the sound Bands to syllables, much like a double letter in English. In English, we see the word letter. We pronounce the T sound only once. However, when we break the word into syllables, the T sound spans both letters. So, for instance, you have letter when you break it down into syllables. In the same way, the Gash Chazach causes the letter to span two syllables, but it does not cause the sound to repeat. You have to underline that. Letters containing a Gash Chazach should be transliterated with a double letter. For instance, you have Masa, so you have Mem, and then you have the Samech, and then you have another Samech, and then you have a He, as well as the word Ata, which is the Aleph, the Tav, the Tav, and the, the He. Note, the transliteration 
of certain letters looks odd to English readers. I want you to underline that. When they are doubled, particularly Hebrew letters that are transliterated with two English letters, such as Zadi and Shin, in these cases it may be easier to read if they are left single. Now, we're going to learn how to tell the difference. Since the Degash Chal and the Degash Chazak look identical, how do we tell the difference? If a vowel appears before the letter, then it is a Degash Chazak. I want you to underline that sentence. As well as you're going to underline the following. If the letter occurs at the beginning of a word or after a silent Sheva, which we will learn about soon, then it is called a Degash Chal. Alright, now we're going to learn the differences between the Degash Chal and the Degash Chazak. Additional notes. I want us to underline these. Degash can appear in any letter except Aleph, K, Ket, Ayin and Resh. However, there are a few cases of a Degash and a Resh in the Hebrew Scriptures. When a He contains a dot, also known as a uh, Degash, it is not a Degash, but it is actually called a Mapik. So I want you to underline the word Mapik, which serves a different function. We will learn this, we, which we actually learned this in Lesson 7. So for instance, the word Gabar, which means uh, word, the word, for instance, in reference to the word of God, Gabar Elohim, uh, that is a Degash Kol, because you notice that the, the Vet is only one. Now, you also notice that it does not have a Mapik. Versus the uh, Gash Chazak in the word Rabba, which you have, of course, the, ra the Rash, you have the Babet, which has, of course, the uh, Mabik, and then you have the He. So you notice the difference between the two. Now we are going to learn more about Sheva and the um, syllabification. Yeah, what page do you want? We are on page number 21, 121, okay. right. in your okay. text. You have already learned the difference between open and closed syllables. However, you have not learned how to have a closed syllable in the middle of a word. Remember, every consonant besides the last one needs to have an associated vowel mark. So remember that. I want you to underline it as well. So how do we represent the sound of a syllable that is a closed, for instance, syllable or closed letter, but is not at the end of a word? For example, the word mamad, which means go, has two syllables, mal and man. This is how it is spelled in Hebrew using only the vowels we know. For instance, the vowels that you have learned so far. So you have, of course, mem. Anyone remember this vowel sound that's right below it? Correct. Alright, and then you have a lama, and then you have another mem with a comet, and then you have Dalet. So it is pronounced Malmad. We need to place a mark beneath Lamed, however, it should not make a sound. It should only signify the end of a syllable. For this, we use the syllable called Sheva. Okay, so for instance, we are going to learn the Sheva. It can also look like that. Alright. 
The name Sheva is pronounced with a very short A sound. It almost sounds the same as if we were um, to spell Sheva. So Sheva looks like two vertical dots below the letter, similar, uh, similar to a small colon. Types of Sheva, there are two types of Sheva and they look the same. One is called Sheva Nach. Um, Nach means resting, so it is a resting Sheva. And the second type is called Sheva Na. Na, which means moving, so it is a moving Sheva. The Sheva Nach makes no sound. It simply means that the syllable has come to an end. It is also called a silent Sheva. A silent Sheva is not transliterated. I want you to underline that entire paragraph if possible, or just that entire sentence. Um, the Sheva Na makes a very short sound like the E in the word petition. You notice that E. Petition. It should be pronounced as short as possible. However, even though it is very short, it still constitutes as a vowel. It is also known as the vocal sheva or the spoken sheva. The vocal sheva is transliterated with the letter E. I want you to remember that as well as underline that. Since it is so short, some people transliterate it with an apostrophe instead. I also want you to underline that. A vocal sheva cannot occur under one of the guttural letters such as Aleph, He, Chet, and Ayin. But a silent sheva can. So I want you to also underline that. Recognizing a vocal sheva, these are what we're going to focus on. Since they look the same, how do we tell the difference? If any of the following is true, then it is a vocal Sheva. So it begins a new syllable. So for instance, if it, if it, has, one, if it has one of any of these um, uh, how to say, uh, characteristics. characteristics, we are going to recognize it as a vocal Sheva, meaning we will actually pronounce the A. It appears under the first letter of a word. It is the second Sheva of two in a row. It occurs directly after a long <coughs> vowel. Remember that. Also, it occurs beneath a letter that contains a digash. So, for instance, we'll notice that a... A vocal Sheva <coughs> would look something like this. Okay? As an example. Now let's turn to page 122. We are going to recognize a silent Sheva. A Sheva must be either vocal or silent. If none of the above conditions is met, the Sheva must be silent. There are also some quick ways that you can know that it is a silent Sheva. And so it marks the end of a syllable. For instance, these are the characteristics of a silent Sheva. It appears under the last letter of a word. This will almost always be under a kaf, sofit, or a tav. It is the first sheva of two in a row. And or, it appears under one of the guttural letters. Remember the difference between a silent sheva and a vocalized sheva. This is one of the differences. So for instance, it will appear in a silent sheva so under the letters Aleph, He, Chet, and Ayin. 
Silent Shava examples, for instance, we will learn these. You have the word Malik, <coughs> which means king. Okay, and you'll see the word, the, the letters Mem, Lamed, and you also see the letter. Anyone know? The Chaf Sofi. As well as Galgal, as well as Ankhala, as well as Rachdan. Now, examples of vocal Shevas are as follows. For instance, you have Gamana, or uh, Gam, Gama, and then you have Amachna, and then you have Zedekha, as well as Shamara. These are examples of vocalized Sheva. So, for instance, in Zedekha, you see the Sheva under the Zadi, which is a silent Sheva, by the way. Or my bad, vocal Sheva, because you have the next, the, the Dalit, you have, of course, a um, Hamatz. Now, we're going to learn a little bit of combining these. So, for, for instance, the combination. Ketadan, and then you have Hamara. Okay, so for instance, um, you'll see where mm -hmm. the uh, vocal Sheva as well as the silent Sheva. So you'll see under Ket, I mean under Ka, you'll see the uh, vocal Sheva, and then under the Vet, you see, of course, the silent Sheva. And it's the same for. Uh, the rash as well. You'll see the silent uh, Sheva under the rash. Now we're going to go to page 123 and we're going to learn some adjectives. This is the fun part. Adjectives describe nouns. They are the description of the noun, such as the word tall or loud. Hebrew also uses adjectives, but they differ from English in many ways, and so we are going to learn those differences today. As you have previously learned, all nouns have a gender. They are either masculine <coughs> or feminine. Also, you learn that <coughs> nouns may be similar or plural. In English, the same adjectives is used no matter what gender or number of the noun they may be. So for instance, you have good boy, good girl, good boys, and good girls. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, each adjective has four forms. Mm -hmm. I want you to underline that. Representing the four combinations of masculine and feminine, singular and plural. An adjective has to have the same gender and number as the noun it describes. I want to underline that as well. When this happens, the adjective agrees with the noun. Adjectives follow a simple pattern. The base form is the masculine, singular form. Other forms are created by adding an ending to the base. The feminine singular ending is often the letter he and makes a a uh sound. Often feminine uh, nouns also end with the same sound. The plural ending for adjectives are the same as a plural ending for nouns. Therefore, adjectives will quite commonly rhyme with their associated nouns, mm. such as Yeladim Tovim, good boys. Here is an example of one Hebrew adjective in all forms. The endings are in bold. So you'll notice you have the word dull, which means good. It's a masculine singular. And then you have tova, which is good, but it's also a feminine singular. Then you have tovin, which is a uh, masculine plural. 
And then you have, of course, Tobo, which is a masculine plural, I mean, feminine plural. Adjective phrase, when an adjective is used with a uh, noun and a phrase in English, the adjective com uh, comes before the noun, such as good boy. In Hebrew, it is reversed. So you have, first of all, you have yeled, which is boy, and then you have the word good, which is tov in the Hebrew. So you'll pr you'll read it as well as pronounce it as tov yeled. Mm -hmm. The word for boy is yeled, which comes from the word, which comes before the word good, which is tov in Hebrew. You have <coughs> also already learned that Hebrew nouns may pre uh, may be preceded by the letter he, meaning the, which of course remember when we learned the letter he means the, so for instance, ha sham, the name in Hebrew. This means that the noun refers to a specific item or items and it is called a, it is called definite. Names of people and places are also considered definite but they do not need to have a letter K. In a Hebrew adjective phrase, the, if the noun is definite, then the adjective must also be made definite by placing the letter H in front of the letter. So for instance, you have the word Hayelet Hatov, which means the good boy in English. But in Hebrew, you'll notice that the he is placed before yaled. The same is for the word hagadol. Okay, so for instance, gadol means big, it also means great. Hagadol, for instance, means the great, or it can mean how great. So you have David Hagadol, David the Great in English. So there are two important rules for adjective phrases. Number one, the adjective must come after the noun. Number two is the adjective and the noun must have the same definitive, the definitiveness. If one of these rules is broken, the words are probably not intended to be an adjective phrase. I want you to underline that. Now, we are going to learn some examples of adjective phrases in Hebrew. So, we already learned Yaleto, which means a good boy. And then we have the word Yaladin Tovim, which means good boys. And then you have Yalda Tova, which means good girl. Now you'll notice the difference. This is a new word. Yalda, which means girl. Now the word Yaladot means girls. So you have the word Yaladot Tovot in Hebrew, which means good girls. Now you have which means the good boy. Then you have Hayaladim Hatovin, which means the good boys in English. And then you have Yaladat Hatova, which means the good girl, followed by Hayadalot Hatovot, which means the good girls, with the S at the end. So it's not singular, it's not plural either. Alright, so these are going to be your vocabularies for lesson, vocabulary words for lesson 8. You have Hayom, which means today. Also, I want to add a word, well actually it's already there, which is Yom, which means day. Then of course we have the command word, the sit, or sit, which is Yeshav. And then you have the word for the state of Israel. Israel in Hebrew, which is Israel in English.
Then we have ken, which means <coughs> yes. It means indeed or of course. <coughs> now you have ma, which means what? Like, for instance, you're replying to someone as after they say something, and you don't quite understand what you're say they're saying, so you say what? So you say the ma in Hebrew. Then you have me, which means who. So these words, the vocabulary words, will be in an exam um, when we uh, conclude with lesson 12. Now, when you go home, I want you to practice reading. For those of you who have not learned the whole alphabet, you're not required to do this until later on, okay? So there's two of you here that have not, actually no, three of you here, who have not learned the whole alphabet because you have missed lessons um, one through six. But that is okay, do not worry. Um, this Saturday, I've gotten permission from Pastor De uh, Dean to teach in this room or in the uh, prayer room uh, to go over those lessons. So for those of you who have time, who would like to come on Saturday on Shabbat and learn a little bit more Hebrew and learn the alphabet, please feel free uh, to come. It will be at 1 o'clock here at the church, okay? For those of you who wish to catch up. So, for instance, uh, reading exercises, review words without Sheva as well as words with Sheva. And if possible, I would like you to actually circle the words uh, with the, uh, both the uh, words without Sheva on the first one as well as words with the Sheva. Now, I want you to also practice on your transliteration. So you're going to transliterate um, each uh, word in, in, into syllables. You're going to write its transliteration and you are going to pronounce it aloud. So when you go home, when you are writing each letter and every vowel that you see there, when you do the transliteration, I want you to speak it. So for instance, like, I'm just going to give an example, the letter Aleph, you are going to write the letter Aleph down and you are going to say it out loud. This helps for memorization, it also helps you learn to read, as well as to transliterate and write. So it helps with everything. Now the quiz will be due on the, uh, on the 20th. So do not worry, that will be the 20th of next month. And next week we will begin with lesson 9, which is Eat Pipe Vowels. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you guys. Have a wonderful day and may Hashem bless you.